Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Hi. This is my second vlog, and it's going to be on the topic of Elon Omar, who I think is uh, one of the most dangerous people in America right now. I was on Tucker Carlson tonight talking about the issue, and um, he's highlighting it because she's gone on a rampage against him, and she has called him a white supremacist, which I find incredibly ironic because if Elon Omar wasn't a member of the U.S. Congress, she'd be a member of the KKK. Her hatred of the world's oldest ethnic minority community, the Jewish people, my people, is not only un-American, but it's inhumane. I mean, she is the face of racism today. This woman has literally made a career out of repeatedly demonizing and bullying American Jews, and it is not okay. Um, it is how, so sickening how she's been embraced, not just by the left, um, but by Democrats. And this institutionalized anti-Semitism is extraordinarily dangerous because you don't have to have a degree in history to know that what starts with the Jews doesn't end with the Jews. And this is a sickness that we have to get rid of in the United States. It really bothers me when Elon Omar hides behind the excuse, well, I'm just criticizing Israel as though that's some sort of affirmative defense to racist discrimination against American Jews. I want to be absolutely clear. She is racist against Jews. There's no problem criticizing Israel, but she targets American Jews. She has said American Jews control Congress with their money. It's all about the Benjamins. She said hip Israel has hypnotized the world. She's insinuated that Jews have dual loyalty. She fought against a House resolution that unequivocally condemned anti-Semitism. She tweeted support for Hamas when Hamas was lobbying rockets at innocent civilians. She has said that Jews are weaponizing the charge of anti-Semitism to stifle debate. She supports the commercial, the unlawful commercial boycott of Jewish Israelis. And she has just recently targeted Lee Zeldin for the crime of launching a black Jewish caucus a much needed caucus and um, you know saying Jews are overreacting to her comments I mean who the hell is she to determine what is offensive to Jews and what is not offensive to Jews that is racism in and of itself to say that you know Jews are are taking my comments too seriously and you know, this is all just a matter of, of criticism of Israel it, it's really disgusting and she also hides behind the notion of you know because she's Muslim and because she's a woman she's somehow insulated from criticism well a hijab does not insulate you from criticism that's called the bigotry of low expectations she is a member of Congress she is in public office everything she says and does it's fair game, and absolutely she should be criticized and called out. Not just for being an anti-Semite, but she's an Islamist. She is an Islamist, Elon Omar. Her views are more aligned with Hamas, the designated terrorist group Hamas, than they are with the U.S. Constitution. She has said Allah will awaken... Uh, Allah will awaken people to see the, the evil of Israel. This is something that I would expect to hear from a radical imam in, in a mosque in Iran, not by a U.S. member of Congress. She shills for CARE. She spoke at a fundraising event for the Council on American Islamic Relations CARE, which is a Muslim Brotherhood front organization, a Hamas funding organization with countless uh, former CARE officials in jail for material support for Hamas. This is who she fundraises for. She's minimized the 9-11 terrorist attacks that killed thousands of American civilians. This woman is un-American. She is an Islamist. And there's just a new controversy every month about her. She's a liar. She's a fraud. She's admitted to lying to high school students about, you know, making up a story about an African-American woman who was arrested for stealing $2 worth of bread. This is a lie. She plays the race card 
all the time and then she herself espouses racism it, it's incredibly hypocritical she now has an issue with um, her her uh, campaign finance violations it was found that she committed thousands of dollars with campaign finance violations for paying for personal travel paying for her personal legal fees she's now apparently committed fraud for multiple years on her tax returns filing jointly with someone who isn't who she's not civilly married to which is what the law requires she's been accused of illegally taking speaking fees her comments about ice are not only unproductive but they're just irresponsible they're juvenile to say that ice should be defunded ice is uh, a, a an arm of the US government that's responsible for arresting thousands and thousands of people in in child smuggling and exploit exploitation cases they deal with human trafficking they arrested just last year 5,000 gang members I mean you have to have zero intelligence to call for the defunding of, of, of ice she was saved uh, she came here when she was young. She was saved from a brutal war She and a refugee camp. She's now a member of U.S. Congress, and she claims that America hasn't lived up to her expectations, which is absolutely typical um, of those who want to tear down our society. America has not lived up to your expectations. It's not good enough for you, so now you have to criticize it and tear it down. How about help us make it better? Give us some constructive criticism. Stop attacking minority communities in the United States. Democrats need to decide who they are because they're clearly in a crisis and if they want to win, which is clearly what they want to do, they have to stop criticizing Trump and they need to put up good candidates. That's all they have to do. Every four years, power transfers in this country peacefully. Put up a good candidate and stop coddling racists. Stop criticizing Trump and coddling racists. That's how you're going to win. And it's ironic because the Democrats have consistently gone after Trump for what they accuse him of doing, of pandering to the right. The Democrats are pandering to the extreme left, to the illiberal left, because they are so afraid of losing those votes. So that's another issue. I mean, why is it that the Democratic Party wants to coddle this type of racism and legitimize the racism? They haven't, you know, disavowed Elon Omar and AOC and Rashida Tlaib from the Democratic Party. They haven't censured them. They haven't kicked Elon Omar off the Foreign Relations Committee. So, so what are they so afraid of? You know, what's the issue? Tucker for the last couple of days has, has been saying that the issue is immigration. I, I respectfully disagree. Elon Omar came here when she was a child. She was radicalized in the United States. The problem is that we are witnessing the targeting, the systematic targeting of minority communities, of those who are economically disadvantaged, and youth students in our country for extremism and radicalization. Look what's happening on college campuses. You have a campus like San Francisco State University, whose ethnic studies department is literally being run by a bunch of professors who are outspoken advocates for terrorists and terrorist groups. Rabab Abdul Hadi, for example, at the Ethnic Studies Department in San Francisco State University, used $7,000 worth of university funds to take a trip to the Middle East to meet with the PFLP, the Palestinian Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Of, sorry, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, a designated terrorist group. These, this is who's teaching on American college campuses. Georgetown University has a campus in Qatar. Qatar is the number one state sponsor of, of Sunni terrorism. That's like getting, you know, American universities offering college degrees in Nazi Germany. It's insane. So we got a, a major problem of radicalization in this country, a problem of rising anti-Semitism, a problem of Islamism. But if you talk about it, it's taboo. You're a racist. You're an Islamophobe. The Council on American Is Islamic Relations Care just published a report that's literally a hit list of Jews calling out Jews for engaging in civil rights advocacy, calling them Islamophobic. So... 
this is the problem <laughs> that we're facing. These are uh, a part of my talking points that I was using tonight on Tucker. But we really have to push back against the whole notion that if the Democratic Party starts to behave like normal people and stops coddling racists, they're going to lose, they're, they're not going to lose votes. And I think that's really the central issue right now. Um, so I was saying, I got cut off. So, so the central issue, again, is this notion that the Democratic Party has to pander to anti-Semitism and racism to gain votes, tackling the problem of radicalization on our college campuses of minority communities and economically disadvantaged communities. And yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Um, oh, yes, and protecting those and supporting those who, who call out these issues and making sure that their free speech is not stifled with uh, histrionic calls and, and accusations of Islamophobia and racism and white supremacy if you're talking about issues of racism. That's it. Good night.